which is an online um, acrylic um, workshop based um, uh, course through Jed Dorsey on Camino Island. Um, and so I have a little thing about it. And we're filming my classes tomorrow and Saturday. We filmed classes two weeks ago, and we'll be filming classes two weeks from now that'll be ready uh, to take in the summer. And you take them online, you sign up online. And sign up, if you're going to do it to take my classes, sign up through my website, because that's how I get paid. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Don't just sign up to Acrylic University. Well, you can, but then I won't be paid. So, I like to get paid. So anyway, I have these to send around, and then on the back is how you can get my books if you can't get them today. Uh, anyway, the books here are $20, and that includes the tax. Um, online, you can get a PDF form that you can just have on your tablet or something, and it's a lot cheaper. So, um, you can do that too. Um, and I just want to say, it's so nice, I see so many familiar faces. Names with familiar faces is a whole different thing, though. Hi, yes. <laughs> face, I love you. <laughs> I'm going to um, talk to you just for a minute about my, a uh, little bit about my journey. I've been an Impressionist painter for 40 years. Um, I studied with uh, people who studied with Russian Impressionist painters. Um, I've worked in watercolor for 10 years, then oil for another eight years and I became super sensitive to oil in the late 90s, so I switched to acrylics. And um, it's a, it, I love acrylics. It's a change I never regret, because uh, when I switched, what happened was I had to stop taking classes. I had taken classes for like eight to 15, 18 years, something like that. <laughs> never really was able to step out on my own. Um, and when I switched to acrylics, there was no one teaching them. So I just had to learn it on my own. I had to just say, okay, I'm uh, unplugging the phone, locking the door, I'm learning how to do this. Uh, goodbye, children. Goodbye, family. <laughs> I'll see you around. <laughs> right? And um, most recently, I realized I want to take my artwork to a different place. I want to keep pushing myself to explore new ideas and new thoughts. And so one of the things I have been doing is writing down on a whiteboard that I keep right by my easel, what is my goal for today? What's my thought for this painting today? Um, this painting, I went to the Oregon coast and I was inspired by the moon coming up just as the sun was setting behind me. And I said, but what if I abstracted it? So that painting is the same painting. <laughs> painted with a two-inch plastic paint scraper that I got at Home Depot for 59 cents. Um, the whole thing is painted with a paint scraper, yeah. Can somebody hold it up? Yeah, yeah. So anyway, my idea was I want to find a way to bring more abstraction to my work. Uh, <clears throat> so anyway, that was the abstracted idea of that painting. Um, and so every painting I do, I'm exploring how far do I push it, how far do I pull back, you know, how much color can I use, how much color can I extract. So every painting becomes an exploration instead of just another, um, another picture. And so all of the pieces you see here, except for this guy, there's a funny story with him, uh, were done in the last three or four months. Um, this guy was done many years ago, but um, I, I go to a farm I, on Prince Edward Island just about every year, and he's the little farmhand. And every year I paint him, and um, he, he thinks I'm in love with him. <laughs> Thank you. So anyway, I have brought a uh, panel 
up here. This is a piece of plywood that I cut with a saw. You know, it just sort of laid it on the table. I cut part of the table off when I was cutting it. And, um, right? <laughs> but it is 12 by 36. And how it is treated, how did it get to look like this? Well, when I paint with acrylics, I have a lot of paint left over. I use a lot of paint. I have a lot of paint left over on my palette. So I take my palette paper, I slap it up here, and I run a brayer over it. Wow. And then I slap it up again and run a brayer over it. And then I slap it up until all the paint has been distributed. <laughs> OK. Maybe I should just <laughs> hang it off my nose so it would be attractive. <laughs> so anyway, if you wanted to know, I've got this lovely abstract piece. Thank you. I need minions. <laughs> Part to my head. <laughs> Thank you. So I'm just going to walk you through the steps. Um, I have a, a picture of the Oregon coast, some a rocky shoreline that I thought would sort of this inspire. I had um, this when it came out looking like this. I thought, oh, Oregon coast, rocky shoreline, setting sun. That looks like it could be it. Sorry. I'm squeaking. So I, I have a small image on my computer. I'm trying not to knock that thing off, which you, or you can come up later and look at. <laughs> That's going to inspire this. And I'm just going to walk through my setup and how I put the paints out. And then I'm going to put some paint on and we'll see how close I can get to this. I'm going to just make a wet palette. Um, most of you who are acrylic painters know the value of a wet palette. So I put a couple of pieces of uh, shop towel down. My Masterson Stay Wet acrylic palette paper. And then I just um, rub it onto the wet paper towel. I don't use the, um, I don't use the sponges because they don't stay wet enough. They dry too fast. This stays wet for up to a month. Wow. And my paints stay wet for up to a month when I do it right. If I do it wrong, they dry right out, just like always. If I do it right, they'll stay wet for a month. And then I can keep using this palette throughout the entire painting process. Because what I do is I um, decide on a design. I decide on a color harmony. I decide how I would like the painting to look when it grows up. I kind of sit around and fantasize for a long time, for maybe an hour or so before I begin painting. I just imagine what would I like the painting to look like? And, you know, it hardly ever matches my expectation, but that's life, you know, so I, uh, I try. Uh, <laughs> right? I mean, you know, there's fantasy and then there's real life. But I do, I do try to imagine um, the best possible version of my painting, and then I start laying it out. And the, the first idea, oh, don't go away. All right, I'll just get it up here. All right. If it keeps going away, I'll just have to wing it. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some paint on my palette, and I like to set my paints up in a color wheel. I, and I start with red, yellow, blue, and I start by mixing colors in a color wheel. So I'm just going to put a whole lot of white paint out. You can see I use a lot of paint, but I don't worry because I don't, um, I don't really waste any of it, unless the painting turns out bad, then it's, <laughs> but, oh well, also life. And the, the way I'm going to set this up, I'll hold it up so you can see it, is um, so that I have my light colors on one side, my dark colors on the other, my warm colors on one side, my cool colors on the other. So that if I want to lighten something, I know right where my light colors are, uh, if I want to darken, if I want to warm, if I want to cool. So. And 
And I'll tell you which colors I'm using. I don't know that it really even matters, because what matters is that they look good up on the canvas. If I have enough breath. I will always be willing to add more colors later, but right now, red, yellow, and blue. This is how I set up my palette. My warms, my cools, my lights, my darks. Want to lighten something, I use white or yellow or a combination. If I want to darken something, I use red or blue or a combination. Warm something, I use red or yellow or a combination. And same way with cooling something. So I've simplified my process. Click, 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 click. <laughs> it's all in my book for $29.99. For <laughs> but I also mix these colors in a color wheel because that's what I'm used to seeing. I'm used to seeing a color wheel. I'm used to um, working with a color wheel. Now, I'm not going to have a lot of green in this painting, but I'm just going to do a little of that anyway. So I'm going to mix my greens here, my oranges here, my purples here, all my colors that are tints of white here, and then anything that's brown or gray or beige in the middle. And ow. <laughs> Get the metal thing in my eye now. <laughs> Thank you, metal thing. <laughs> no, no, these won't dry out. This is uh, Masterson Stay Wet Palette Paper. They won't dry out. Uh, this will take a month to dry out. And the thicker your paints are, the longer the drying time. So this is really, so you can see I've got yellow, green, green, blue, green, yellow, orange, orange, red, orange. Uh, I'll do the same with uh, the violet and then I'll get started. Uh, all right, all right, we're going to get that. Put my glasses over it. It won't stick me in the eye. I still think we should clip it to my nose like a nose ring. I think that would be the All right, all right, great, perfect. All right. How about just sticking it in my hair like a bow? There we go. Okay. So I'm going to get, um, so my red violet, violet, blue violet. Ta-da! Color wheel. Now, when I paint, I will mix up the big globs of the colors I want, and I mean big, big, big globs of the colors I want, and I can always go back to them because they will dry on my canvas. They'll dry really fast on my canvas. I'm going to paint with a lot of paint, and I'm going to paint really fast. Um, but I'm going to start some tints of blue because my image has some sky in it. So I'm going to um, start working on getting blue. So I kind of think about this as being, um, I've developed my own way of putting this palette together because I was having trouble finding my colors and they'd get buried under little tiny squirts of other colors and you'd put out a tiny dot and it would get muddy. This way, my big piles don't get muddy. I can put them back in my, did you see I scooped them out of this fishing tackle box? I can scoop them back in when I'm done. They don't get contaminated. I can always find the color I mix. I don't have to waste any time looking for a color or remixing a color. It's just there. Um, so, these are obviously not the nuanced colors that I'm going to want, but we're getting there. Um, now I'm going to create some sort of violet gray for the rocks in my, we'll just touch that and make sure it stays for a minute. I'm going to create some violet grays for those rocks, and I'm just blazing through my brushes because I'm too lazy to wipe them off. So I'm going to start with a violet. I'm going to lighten. There you go. You got it. Uh, you it. And add just a note of yellow. Mm -hmm. OK, I like that. Um, <clears throat> and then for the sunny part of my rocks, I'm going to create a, a uh, warm color. 
light, warm color. I'm using yellow oxide and Darylite yellow sort of mixed together to create my warms. I'm using quinacridone magenta for my red and anthroquinone blue. Um, so I'm going to gray that just a little bit. Okay, I have a palette I'm going to start with. And we'll just see how far we go. Um, are you having fun? Yes. <laughs> I'm having fun! <laughs> what I thought was really neat was the location of this blob. So I'm going to just sort of keep the location of that blob intact as if it were the sun. And I'm going to just sort of draw on here with my brush. Just kind of create some movement of shapes. And then I'm going to start putting my shapes together. I just have to just kind of locate where my shapes are going to go. And then I'm going to put in the light shapes and the dark shapes. Um, I just I do a, a series of, of uh, slide lectures too. And the one I just did for um, uh, what, what 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 is it Winslow Winslow Art Center was called the Color of Light. And if you guys want me to come back and do some of my slide lectures, I have one called How an Artist Sees How to See Like an Artist. One called the Color of Light and one called Two of them, it's a two-part series called Near and Far, 12, 12 different techniques for creating distance in your painting. So I have all those slide lectures, but I'm going to create light in this painting, or attempt to create light. starting out thin and then I'll pick up I'll sort of pick up the uh, texture in just a, just a few minutes because they dry fast. And so if you can um, paint quickly, which means you need to sort of go in with a plan, which is sort of what I was doing, which is kind of going in with a plan so that I can get in here and paint relatively quickly um, so my paints don't dry, because that's how you get those soft edges. The biggest complaint I have from people, two big complaints, it dries so fast and they, you can't get soft edges. Well, yes, you can. It's just not done the same way that you do it with oils. So, um, and you do have to learn to be very purposeful and not sort of be random, which I hope I can be today because I don't have very much time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm working this way. So he was in proportion, you know, and he didn't get too big for my painting, and his, uh, usually their heads get so big, you know, so I marked how big I wanted his head to be on the painting and in proportion to everything, but um, that's kind of it 
with him. So what I'm doing right now is I'm just sort of blocking in my darks, and then I will block in my lighter colors, and then block in my lightest colors. What I love about having all this color under, that could go up, is that gonna mess? No. What I love about having all this color underneath is um, that little bits of it pop through, and it just sort of has a little bit of another, like a secret language underneath the main image. There's this little surprises, like where did that bright red orange come from? Uh, well, I did choose this image because I would have like a half of a possibility of getting it somewhere close to uh, wrapped up in an hour, but I'm not making any promises, really. <laughs> but I'll do my best. Sometimes with the demonstration, the artist will send us a photo after it's totally done and we can put it on the website. I'll do that. If I don't get totally done today, I'll do that. make a mess. Oh, I'm so happy this has found its home. <laughs> and now that it's found its home, I've stopped talking. <laughs> Anthroquinine. Uh, I don't know if that's the right pronunciation. Just saying. It's sort of my way of Do you use mostly one kind of acrylic paint, or do you vary? I like golden um, because it's so trustworthy. I can I know that it's going to have the most um, pigment because I paid so much for it, <laughs> and I also know what it's going to dry to because most acrylics dry slightly darker because their binder is white and dries clear, sort of like Elmer's glue. Mm -hmm. And um, so they appear to be drying a little bit darker. Um, and so I sort of understand how they're gonna dry. So here's a little trick for, there's a lot of acrylic painters in here, you probably know this trick. But I let my color dry, and I still have it mixed up on here. 
And so I just lighten it a little bit. If I want it to be, if I felt like this drank too dark, I'll just lighten the wet pile here a little bit lighter than I thought I should, and then I'll go back and lighten it up. tackle box sort of looks like this. Oh, it's for lures. Yeah, it's for lures. And I have my paint squeezed out in this. There's a wet paper towel in here to keep it wet. Um, and I have basically 10 colors in here. Is that for travel? This is for always. I don't, this, I just keep this in my studio, then I can just put the paints away and just refill the box when I need it. But I have a warm, a cool, and a neutral of each of my primaries. That's it. That's all I paint with. Now, people over the years have given me paints, lots of paints. And so I have boxes and piles and stacks of other colors that I will sometimes pull out and use. But for the most part, I have a warm pool of neutral of red, yellow, and blue, and white. And all these paintings were painted from that simple palette. I vary which red, yellow, and blue I use painting to painting. But pretty much what I find is it holds, it's cohesive, and it holds the color harmony together in a way that is so easy for the color harmony to, to blow apart if you've got 20 colors on your palette. So, and look at how beautiful the colors are. They, they're just, and I have a huge range. More than this, more than this. Way more with this palette. You noticed I did put two yellows on here because I wanted a little bit of neutral and I also wanted a little bit of warm. So I, I gave myself two yellows. And if I find I need other colors, yeah. What other kinds of tools do you use besides a paintbrush? I use a rubber spatula. I have several kinds. This is one that I'm gonna switch to in a minute. It's called a color shaper. I use a palette knife. Here's the other rubber spatula, and I didn't bring it today, and I don't know why, but I use a two-inch uh, plastic paint scraper from Lowe's. It's just a piece of white plastic, and I just scrape away with it, and that's fun. So, speaking of that, I'm going to start moving into thicker paint. Don't go out. <laughs> I, I've never used a razor blade because I, I generally paint on canvases. Um, but I do use the back end of my palette knife or the back end of my paintbrush, and I'm going to do that just in a second here. What I do is I just take the edge of my palette knife and I just scratch a texture in. Like this or the back side of a paintbrush, especially sorry about the sound, just <laughs> <laughs> but especially if I feel my painting is getting just a little too precious and I'm fussing over it a little too much, just going in and scratching it all the heck, it's ruined. The painting's wrecked. Now I have to do some uh, remedial work on it. <laughs> Um, and I, you know, and that's fine. That's just fine for me. I, I sort of, it creates edges that are, that are much more interesting and creates a texture on the painting that I think is more interesting. And if you go look up close at most of these, you'll see all kinds of scratches in them. Like all kinds of places where I just went in and scraped it all up because I was starting to go, oh, what is this? <laughs> Your painting needs to be fun, and it is fun. And the only, I mean, I'm doing a demo, and yeah, there's a possibility that I will ruin this painting in front of a whole group of people and be terribly embarrassed. But when I'm home in my studio, nobody's looking, I can just cover it up if I don't like it. Oh yeah, I don't have to show anybody. I can treat it like it's my personal journal and burn the pages if it's something that I would rather no one know about. So, uh, 
Pardon me? Answer point nine blue. Isn't it pretty? It's a beautiful blue. Now, I don't have black on my palette, and I didn't bring any black, but um, I will use black from time to time. I don't keep it on my palette because it tends to muddy my colors a bit. Um, but there's no, there's no reason not to have it. It makes lovely, soft colors. Um, but I, I feel like I can soften the colors myself. Um, so I just, uh, I personally tend to not have it on my palette. So I've got the sound. Usually I have music going so I can't, I won't make myself crazy. <laughs> You want us to sing? Yes, please sing. <laughs> Anything except the Inky Binky Spider and we're good. <laughs> or the wheels on the bus. Oh. <laughs> you can see I, I moved to Portland to be my, by my grandsons. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, no. They're great. They're the best. Who knew? Well, everyone who's had grandchildren. should be varnished. They're rather, it seems like acrylics are really tough, but they're rather delicate things. Mm -hmm. um, and so, it, and especially if you've used any water at all in the paint, the paint will tend to break away from its binder if you've used any water in the paint. The water will sort of pop it apart, and the more water you use in your paint, the looser the pigments get, so it's best to varnish when you're done. Um, I don't use any water in my paint at all, so um, I don't have that problem. But in years past, I've you know, done big glazes or washes with water, and then I go to wipe my painting off with a rag, and there's all sorts of pigment on the rag because I've loosened it up with the water, so. Um, yeah, so yeah. Pardon me? 
No, I use a brush, palette knife, scraper, uh, fingers. Oh, no, I just wipe it off. Yeah, I just I just do this. Yeah, see. <laughs> yeah, just wipe it off. I have some, and if I'm doing like a delicate portrait or something, I might use the open acrylics. Um, it's just, a, I don't care for them so much because they're a little sticky. These are nice and creamy, and I love the creamy texture. They're, if you use them thick, they're a lot, they're creamy in the way that oil paints are creamy, and I really like that. Golden. Okay. So do you use uh, like gap, uh, whatever hundred to seal the wood first? Um, gesso. Not just gesso. That will not keep the oils of the wood out of the paint eventually. No, I have not used gap. I haven't had any problem. I use um, Utrecht professional gesso, and it seems to do the trick. If I find my paint is somehow being um, obstinate and too thin, I will add um, a medium to thicken it up. Or if I want to just make the passages much thicker. Um, sort of starting to lose my place a little bit. I need to. Focus in just a just a hair here. I'm gonna switch to my spatula. One of the things I'm noticing right now is that my paints aren't drying at all. They're super wet everywhere. Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah, you're all, all of you stop breathing. You're being too human. <laughs> I'm trying to do is find the movement through here and I'm finding that this is a little wet still to work into to get that movement of the, the little shapes of water and stone through this area so I'm just gonna smush it out a little bit and let it dry there's some beautiful little patterns in here which is part of the reason I chose this I loved this uh, dance of the patterns of water um, where was I?
like this color shaper because it's sort of shaped like the top of a rock. Pardon me? Um, it's yellow ochre and yellow, uh, diorite yellow sort of mixed together. D-I-A-R-Y-L-I-T. It's a really warm, it would mimic cadmium yellow deep. Um, I don't put cadmiums on my paintings because I tend to really get into it and make a mess. And, um, so I've substituted everything that is cadmium for something else. Right? You just need to be, I, I was so sick from the oils and I just felt like I needed to be more careful. So as I started developing a palette to use, I decided I would be more careful, which is why I am beginning to phase out Cerulean blue, because cerulean blue is also a carcinogen. So I, that I substituted anthraquinine as my more neutral blue. Um, but if you look on the tubes, if you see like cadmium yellow hue, it's a combination of um, Hansa yellow light and Dare light yellow. They mix it together, put it in a tube, call it cadmium hue. Cadmium red hue is a mixture of quinacridone, magenta, and natural red light. <laughs> so I just have them here. I mix them together and make my, my cadmium hue myself. Um, and because I just discovered that cerulean is sort of poisonous and toxic, I just decided to phase it out of my paintings. If I need it for little touches, I'll put it back. I just will be more careful with it. You know, I'll just squeeze it out of the tube when I need it, use it for what I need. Um, yeah. Is that because you don't wear gloves? I don't, yeah, it's because I don't wear gloves. Because I wear plastic gloves. My hands are so sweaty, the gloves would just drip right off my hands. So I, I uh, have not found a glove that I don't end up just looking like my fingers are melting. <laughs> so, um, and also just because I, I sort of am worried about all the cadmiums going into my water system. and. I, I lived for years by a bay, and I had, um, and I was worried that putting all the paints down my septic tank, somehow those toxins might get into the bay, and um, I kind of liked my bay, so I didn't want to do that. So, <laughs> but now I, you know, now I'm in Portland, and it's like a public water system. I still would rather, if I'm just keeping my, keeping my. Um, uh, you know, whatever it is I'm doing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I don't require anyone else to do it, but we've had cancer in our family, and I was sick for 10 years. The oils made me sick for 10 years. Wow. It took me 10 years to recover. I was so, um, they messed up my, um, my immune system, and so I, my joints were swollen. And my husband had to help me up and down the stairs in and out of the car for 10 years. I was like this. And I, you know, I try to pretend like everything was fine in public. <laughs> but it was really a mess. And I had food allergies like crazy. It took so long to get better. Um, and it was my fault. I wasn't careful. And so I'm being careful. And I love colors. So I'm being careful. Oh, I lost my picture. Come back. <laughs> Don't go away. I just want to find this space through here and find my curving, oh look at that, it's still wet. Find my um, curving lines, find my water patterns in here um, in 10 minutes. <laughs>
No, it was, um, sun was just starting to sink down into the ocean. Um, Thank you. 